Hey everyone, it's your girl Maddie here, aka Beaver Mosh. And before I get too into the video, I want to thank my latest patron, Jeffrey Canham. Thank you so much for the support. And now, I'm here to talk to you about Care Morhen from the US based Hexablad. And this is coming off of Hypnotic Dirge Records. Uh, Care Morhen, this old hidden keep in the Witcher series, which is the main lyrical inspiration for this honestly very traditionalist, in a good way, black metal project. If you want the cult stuff, <laughs> you're gonna get it here. It's Blue Castle Black Metal. This has that old Scandinavian style melodicism. It's cold, it's grim. It's it's all of the words, all, all of them. This is a record that finds that central balance between atmosphere and, and, and darkness and, and heaviness and doesn't sacrifice one for the other, ever. School of the Wolf, again, has that classic black metal melodicism uh, mixed perfectly with just an absolute ferocity. The drumming here is is militant. The vocals have that classic 90s dry howl to them. The guitars just have this raw, frosty tone that makes me all <laughs> giddy inside. Honestly, I, I kind of wish more bands would make black metal like this. On a grain of truth, these atmosphere-conducing tremolos feel like they are moving at like this seesawing passage. It's a wild effect. The band even finds ways to add in these very ornate, bouncing keys. It adds to the whole medieval casting spells on the castle thing. I pick up, in fact, I think it's pretty clear, the Vinterland influence here, in my opinion. The way these melodies will come in and go and then burst into these emotive runs. I love the introduction of the harpsichords on the white flame before it just rushes into complete black metal chaos. This is an album that is as to the throat as it is pensive and bathing in dark magic. Listen to the grizzled fury on the blast beats in A Taste of Ash, raw and nasty, but really well recorded, you know has a great tone to them that comes through with quite a clarity. While the guitars take on these minor key rising riffs, it's also built up and epic and <laughs> otherrealmly. The title track actually brings in these lovely woodwinds and strings. The folksier passages here are welcome. It, before, you know, erupting into a mountain of black metal guitars, but I like how they incorporate passages like this, it feels like it's bringing me more into the overall setting that they're painting for me. There's actually a crazy solo here. It's speedy, it screeches at you. It's credited to Sorjandid of Morning by Morning, where the lead extends into this snaking, sinister ritual, but then it'll drift back down into this softer passage. It feels like it's being performed by a bard as you just exit, you know, the outer city into this alley, into this street, and you're outside prepping, you're outside of Charest's caress, prepping your party to take on Gortash. I just love how the band is able to play with contrasting moods like this. I think the track Mastercrafted it finds a perfect balance between atmosphere violence, melody, and mood. And they're all just kind of equally paid attention to in some select passages. I think you just have to feel it for yourself to really understand what I mean there. And I want to emphasize, this thing has riffs. Memorable, distinguishable riffs that punch at you. I love the more dreary, open, hypnotic strums that take on and carry Fall of the Northern Realms. It adds a bit of dark ambient to the mix. The track starts off slow. It saws at you, gradually sucking you into this 
mystical vortex. The vocals are just excellently dramatized, very easily projecting the various emotions that this character takes throughout the album. Sodden then quickly brings it to a another extreme with these classic jagged strumming riffs tail ended by these cold spiraling tremolos. This is as close to second wave Norway as you're going to get in black metal in 2024. That Gurn is kind of a cinematic closer to the album. It feels like the final credit scene after you finish a long RPG that took you a hundred hours to complete according to Steam if you skip the side quest. Triumphant rising melodies drift back and forth into these somber, swelling, lonely, clean guitars. Some of the double tracking in the guitars here makes everything feel grandiose. You know, the battle is on while at the same time some more patient, romantic leads, you know, find their way into the mix. And it's a, it's a great recipe. Bring in some more good folk instrumentation here and you have a great closing track that brings you through various ideas and concepts and makes it all work together like a great story. I gotta say, I am very, very impressed with this album. Every track feels carefully plotted. Go, there's a lot of variation that makes it feel so complete. Nothing is wasted. So many memorable riffs, convincing vocal performances, great melodies. This thing really nails that black metal recipe without sounding like it's copying somebody else's homework so uh yeah if you like black metal if you like that old school traditional take on black metal get on this <laughs> it freaking rules high praise from me and those are my thoughts if you like what i do hit the like button it mean the world to me if you'd consider subscribing i have a twitter you can follow link to that is in the bio of this youtube channel uh, leave a comment. I love getting to engage with those. Thank you to my patrons. Yes, I have a Patreon. No pressure to give that way. But if you wanted to support the show financially, I would be so appreciated. I put exclusive content there every month. Uh, but you watching right now, keep it metal. My name is Maddie, a.k.a. Beaver Mutt. And I'm signing off.